Okay, uh, so in this lab, we are going to collect some tweets and we're going to manually label parts of the tweet data so that we give them the, the human answers or some or the right answers, quote, quote, right answers. And next, we are going to bring those label data to naive Bay model so that we train naive Bay model and we apply model to some unlabeled data. So let's see that how we can use naive Bay, naive Bay model to do some classifications. So first, let's create a new folder. And let's call it lab seven. And for this lab, we're going to collect some Twitter data. So uh, let's see, search tweet. And uh, I'm going to use uh, my connection. So that is predefined connection. Uh, so uh, if you check our previous lab, you will see that especially the second lab that you will see that how we can make the, the connection and also how can we collect tweets. Uh, so here are the keywords. I'm going to search election and I'll see if I can find out 1000 tweets. Okay, uh, so let me just try it first. Okay, uh, so looks like I have uh, 700 tweets, which is fine. So in the return result, I have IDs and I have, uh, you see, um, the text. Of course, I have some other information, but we only care about ID and also text. Okay, uh, so the Twitter is not saved yet. So let's see. Uh, so next, we're going to design the more process that we're going to save the data. Um, and also, we're going to select those attributes that we're really interested. Um, and also, we're going to save the data into Excel files. So let's go back to design tools. And the first, let's say we want to select the attribute. We just want uh, the ID and also the text. Okay, so we just want ID and also text. And we also want to give it a new um, field called label. So let's say we want create or generate attribute. Uh, generate attribute. And here, let's say attribute name, label, um, and also uh, the default value will be um, a pair of the double quotation marks, so that means it will be an empty string. And next, let's split our data. So, split our data so that say we will make sure that uh, we can use automatic. Uh, we want to make sure that only 10% we're going to label that, and also 90% we are not going to do anything. So this will be the 10% and this will be the 90%. So let's write the result to an Excel file. Uh, so here, so the first type will be labeled data. So that we're going to label so that is 10%. Um, so to write the Excel files, so that we don't need the output. But instead, we're going to define where we are going to save it. So let's um, disconnect to the result window, but instead, let's see where do we want to save it. So uh, we can save it to uh, if you want download folder, that's fine. So let's say this one will be labeled. And let's do the same thing for those unlabeled. Okay. And those will be on labeled. All right, so now uh, before we run it, so let's save this process. So we save it in the lab seven folder. So that is the first process that is collect tweets. So that in the future, if you want to do it again, and you can just reuse those process. Okay, uh, so let's run it. Okay, uh, so it is completed. And if I go to my downloads folder, and here you can see I have two files. One is labeled and also one, one is unlabeled. And for this unlabeled, the file is much bigger. So if I now I open this labeled, 
uh, you can see that I have three columns. The first one is text. OK, so there are about, say, uh, 70 tweets, so 91 percent, 10 percent of the tweets. Um, and also those are the IDs of each single tweet. So you can see IDs are different and the label is empty. So this is the Excel file that you have to read through manually. And also you have to give some labels. OK, so for example, uh, I'm going to read those tweets and I'm going to see which one support Trump, which one supports Biden or which one just is neutral, so not a Trump or not Biden. So I'm going to read those tweets manually and just spend some time. So that's 70 tweets. Um, OK, and about uh, I spent like 10 minutes to to roughly read those tweets and also I label those tweets as either support Biden or support Trump or neutral. Uh, well, um, my labeling might be <laughs> very low accurate because um, I'm not familiar with some, a lot of those backgrounds. So anyway, so those are should is kind of supposed to be the true ground truth because those are read by human beings. OK, so those are considered the labeled data because just assume that I did everything correct. OK, because those are done by human beings. So let's save that. So that is labeled uh, Excel file. And for this unlabeled, so we have more tweets. So uh, we have should have roughly about 700 tweets. OK. Uh, so you can see that we don't want human to read those tweets. So we want to use naive bay to classify see whether or not uh, uh, the machine can help us classify those tweets. OK, so for this unlabeled tweets, we have the similar structure. We have text. Uh, we have those IDs and also the labels are the empty. OK, so we leave that one as empty. All right. So now let's go back to the right miner. So we're going to do the second step. So let's create a new process. And this step, we're going to merge those tweets together, or those Excel files together. So let's say, let's read those Excel files. So read Excel files. And let's import that one. So this will be the labeled. OK, that's pretty nice. And let's copy and paste that one. So this one will be the unlabeled. OK. Uh, so let's see how the result, uh, how those uh, will look like. OK, so those are the unlabeled. So it has those question marks. And those are the labeled. OK. And the next, we're going to merge those two together. So set as one tweets uh, as one data set so we're going to use a pen function okay and because they have the same uh, structure so let's append that one okay so now you can see it's pretty nice okay so we have some tweets that are unlabeled and we have some tweets are labeled and next we are going to uh, convert some data from nominal into text. So if you remember in the result, the text should be text, but actually it's still polynomial. OK, so let's convert that one to text. So that's uh, nominal to text. So we're going to tell uh, right minor, OK, so the text should be text. So the, the text field should be the text format. And let's see. OK, so now you can see the text. The tab is text. And next, we are going to set the rules. So so we are going to tell a uh, right miner that what are the labels and also what are the IDs. So in this case, um, see, we want to see that uh, ID is ID. OK, and we also want to tell that the label is label. OK, so ID is ID, label is label. And let's see how that works. Because ID will not be participate in this um, date 
uh, selection or the uh, calculation so that ID should be a, 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 a special data type and also label is that is our target so okay so that is the one that we want to classify so that is set rules okay so now starting from here we are going to process the data that for the documents so uh, first we're going to convert data into documents because we're going to do some tech, uh, text mining so we need to first convert data into documents and we need to process the document so basically we need to um, convert text in to quantify the text okay so we need to calculate the currency of each single text so first we convert data into documents and next we're going to process document okay so if you type process documents okay and let's double click so here there are several things that we need to do to process the documents first let's say we want to tokenize okay so tokenize is a very important step that basically uh, we'll convert the, the count the currency of the uh, of the words and also convert those words into uh, the uh, currency of those words and next let's say we want to transform the cases so so we want to convert all the words into lower cases so we want to eliminate um, so we want to see all the words that have same letters will be considered the same words so uh, there's no difference between um, capitalized words and also lower cases and we also want to fill out the stop words because in, in english and also in other languages there are a lot of stop words that are highly frequently used but actually has less meaning like this that is etc and uh, finally let's fill out some words that are uh, either very uh, have very um, shorter cases let's say two or if they have very longer cases for example let's say 20 so those probably are the, uh, some words that are meaningless And finally, so for the process itself, you can see that we are using the VACT creation. We are using TF-IDF. So that is probably the most uh, popular uh, vector creation method. So that's fine. That's great. And next, let's save the data. So we don't want, it, uh, we don't want to put that into as a temporary result. So let's say we store the data. And we can store that one into our local repository. Uh, so that is, let's say, tweets. OK, and let's write and see how that will look like. Let's write. OK, uh, so that is the result. So we can see we still have labels and we have IDs. And now we have those tokenized. So for example, for the first tweet, does not contain a b or a b c or a b c news so the the result will be zero and if they did contain some words so you can see they do have the like this tweet has future so that has a tokenize of this one okay so this is something that we call the sparse data okay uh, so the data has a lot of zeros okay so now the data is ready so you can see that we have the tweets and then let's save this process as well so this let's call this one uh, process tweets okay process tweets okay so now let's create a new process okay so new process and now let's drag the, the process tweets here. So we create a new process and we just uh, brought the data that just processed from the second uh, step. And let's look at like 
let's look at the data. So here we have tokenized uh, tweets. We have two special columns. One is ID and one is label. So for the labels, uh, we have several values. So you can see that for the labels, uh, we have a lot of question marks. So those are the missing values. And we have relatively a uh, same amount of tweets at for Biden, neutral, and also for Trump. OK, so next, let's fill out the samples. So fill out the samples. That means that we want to find out the labels. OK, so if you cannot find that one, you can just type label. That does not equal to question mark. OK, does not equal to question mark. OK, so now we have all the tweets that are labeled tweets. So here we have all the labeled tweets. You can see here we have all the labeled tweets. And once we have the labeled tweets, now we can bring the naive B model. Let's bring the naive B model and to build the model. And let's also apply the model to the data. And let's calculate the performance. So that is performance on the um, on the training data. Okay, uh, let's report kappa and also accuracy, and let's also see the model look like. So let's run it. Uh, the accuracy is pretty high, and kappa is also pretty high. So that means the model did a pretty good job on the in terms of the training data. OK, and that is a model. OK, uh, we can see that uh, we have relatively the same equivalent classification, actually. So that's that's pretty interesting. So um, uh, and if you remember that those are just the, uh, the probabilities for each single word that shows in different um, for different categories. OK, uh, so now we know that the model is pretty good. And uh, we can bring the model to um, uh, our new data, so that unlabeled data. So what we are going to do is that we are going to apply the model again. OK. Here, the model will be the same model. And however, we are going to apply the model for this unlabeled result. OK, so that is unlabeled result. OK. And let's look at the results, predictions. OK, so now you can see that for this first one, so it predicts as Trump. For the second one, it predicts as neutral. A third one is Trump, etc. So if you look at the statistics, uh, predictions, OK, uh, we can see that most tweets are predicted to support Trump. Uh, few tweets are predicted to support Biden. And also uh, only, only 150 tweets that are, uh, predict, uh, are classified, sorry, classified as neutral. OK, so that. Uh, there is no way we can evaluate the accuracy on the unlabeled data because we don't have ground truth. So if you want to check whether or not your data is uh, overfit, then you have to do split test here. OK, so you have to do the split test here. OK, so next, so let's say that we want um, to see the result and also together with our labeled data. So can we do that? Yes. So let's say we want to, so we want to read those tweets and also together with those predict result. So how can we do that? So let's say first we load the, um, those unlabeled tweets. Okay, actually I should go through this way. OK, and we set ID as ID. So that is where we see that uh, ID is important. So we set ID as ID. 
ID as ID. Okay. And next, we can join those results. So let's say we want join. So left and to the right. And which that is the inner join. And uh, we can actually just check this one. Use ID attribute as a key. I think that should work. Okay, and it looks like on the left side, there's no ID. Okay, let's just use ID equals ID, okay? ID equals ID. Okay, and next, let's select attribute. So because we don't want uh, those tokenized, so let's say uh, we want a subset, which we want the text, And we want the predicted labels. And then probably we want the IDs as well. OK, so let's see if we can find out ID. Uh, nope. OK, never mind. And let's see the result. All right. OK, ID is still here. That's nice. So we can see the first one that is predict Trump. Uh, okay, uh, the second one that predict neutral. And the third one is predict to support Trump. Yeah, so you can read more and see if um, <laughs> the result is accurate so uh, or not. Okay, so it, it really highly depends on that whether or not your um your original labeling was accurate so i think uh in this case i would say that so far some they say talking about the mac pens um this talking about trump um so i think in my case um it is not accurate and i think highly because that i trained a few samples and also when i label those tweets because i didn't give the right answer so um, so that's why those accuracy may, may not be very good. However, the accuracy on the training sample is pretty good. That's that's pretty amazing. OK, so finally, uh, let's save our last process. So let's call it uh, prediction. OK, so now so you can reuse those process for different set different uh, topics, for example, if you are interested in the COVID-19 and you can choose a query to be COVID-19 and uh, you can manually label those tweets. Um, so the more you label, so the, the, the better the, uh, the model will be. And also the, the more accurate you label, the better the model will be. And next, you need to follow the, do the same process so that join the table together and pan those tables together and also convert into documents so that you can tokenize uh, those documents. And then finally, um, you make the predictions where you load the, the, um, the process tweets. For those tweets that have labels, we um, train the models and we apply the models and we calculate performance on the training data. And for those unlabeled tweets, we apply the trained model and also uh, we, we join the original tweets so that we can see that uh, for the new tweets that whether or not the prediction are good or not.